हेलो वेलकम डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह दिस साइड टुडे इन यूनिट सिक्स व्यू फ्रॉम द फील्ड वी कंटिन्यू आवर टॉपिक फील्ड बेस्ड स्टडी एंड सब टॉपिक इज कास्ट इन बी सी पारा विलेज ऑफ ओरिसा बेले स्टडीड द बी सी पारा विलेज ऑफ ओरिसा विच हैड सेवरल कास्ट ग्रुप्स रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय डिफरेंट पॉपुलेशन साइजेज दैट वेरीड फ्रॉम वन परसेंट टू वन फिफ्टी परसेंट ही सैड दैट द कास्ट ग्रुप्स आर यूनाइटेड इन टू अ सिस्टम थ्रू टू प्रिंसिपल्स नेमली सेग्रीगेशन एंड हायर की कास्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू द बेले स्टैंड इन अ रिचुअल एंड सेकुलर हायर की एक्सप्रेस्ड इन रूल्स ऑफ इंटरेक्शन हेयर बिले सीज द कास्ट सिस्टम एज अ डायनामिक वन इन विच डिफरेंट कास्ट आर हेल्ड टूगेदर बाय द पावर ऑफ द डोमिनेंट कास्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू हिम कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द रिचुअल स्टेटस ऑफ अ कास्ट ग्रुप गोज हैंड इन हैंड with the political and economic status the relationship between caste is simply based on practice of rituals the concern is with power because many caste and subordinate to the dominant caste in fact the caste system is held together because of the concentration of the power in the hands of the dominant caste since ritual rank is always consistent with political and economic status once a caste becomes wealthy it changes it, its pattern of interaction with other caste so that it may claim a higher rank in hierarchy in other words a caste rank in the hierarchy is expressed through its pattern of interaction with the other caste here the pattern of interaction becomes an indicator of its ritual status in the hierarchy the pattern of interaction includes the acceptance and distribution of food and water willingness to smoke together and or sit together may also be treated as the indicator of the pattern of interaction exchange of gifts is included in the list bale also talks about the interaction between people of the same caste spread over different villages in the region a caste spread over the particular region may come together and strengthen ties through marriage when this reason why relationship matures the caste may strive for power in the political sphere bale explains the aforesaid issue by looking at intercaste interaction of bisipara according to bale generally speaking in the upper and lower extremes of the hierarchy one can find perfect correspondence between the rituals political and economic status in bisipara the warriors stood at the top of the caste ritual hierarchy next only to the sole brahman family in the villages but in the secular hierarchy consisting of political and economic status is warriors were the dominant caste they owned a large part of the land and dominated the village council but what happened after the change that swept bc para in post independent period is more important to note from the vintage point of the field view of caste system after experiencing the winds of the change the warriors position came to be ambiguous in the ritual hierarchy because they lost much of their land moreover the merchant class as well in the distiller caste came to claim a position next to that of the brahmins none of these caste would accept food or water from one another anymore thus the conflict between developed between the distillers and the warriors 
regarding their position in the ritual hierarchy. Warriors like Brahmans accepted water from the herdsmen caste but not from the distillers. Thus, implicitly, the warriors placed the distillers below herdsmen in the ritual hierarchy. The herdsmen accepted food and water from warriors but refused it from the distillers. The distillers now reached by accepting food and water only from the Brahmans and no one else. Thus, distillers of Visipara claimed for themselves a position next to Brahmans after attaining wealth and weakening of the economic status of warriors. The Visipara case of distillers reveals that the Whenever there is an improvement in political and economic status, caste tend to change their pattern of interaction only to claim a higher rank in the ritual hierarchy. It is contrary to the book view that, the, that assigned a fixed ritual hierarchy for all time with Brahmans at the top and Shudras at the bottom. Now let us uh, move to the next point, caste in Ramkheri village in Madhya Pradesh. Ramkheri village is situated near a small town by the name of Divas in the Madhya Pradesh. Ramkheri had 25 Hindu and 2 Muslim castes. Commercial relations were strictly reg regulated, though the flexibility was possibly occasionally. To understand the hierarchy of conventional relation, Mayer observed the following. Types of activities like eating, drinking water and smoking. Type of food, pakka food and kacha food. The place and context of eating, wedding or mourning who is seated next to whom while eating, who provides the food, who cooks the food, in what vessel is water given, brass or earthen port. Mayor protects the village as a concrete reality affecting human relationships. It is from the interaction between the various castes in a village that a hierarchy of caste emerges. Mayor analyzes inter-caste relations and their relations with the unity of the village. Mayor identifies economic and political interaction and more importantly, commensality as the factors when which determine caste hierarchy in the village. According to Mayer, it is difficult to determine the rank of caste solely on the economic and political basis. The problem with economic and political factors is that all members may not come together or have interaction in the economic and political sphere. It is also a fact that economic wealth may cut across caste divisions. In other words, a person of a high caste may have a poor economic status and vice versa. These problems are resolved in the context of ritual status. Ritual status in the caste hierarchy uniformly applies to everyone in the caste. Even in the patterns of interaction, it is only the commensal hierarchy that can give an intricate system of relations between caste. In the word of mayor, the ranking of caste is nowhere more clearly seen than in the commensal rules of eating, drinking and smoking. Caste hierarchy is not determined solely by economic and political factor, although these are important. For him, the single most important factor is commensuality, which clearly indicates the hierarchy prevalent in the village. 
It is a fact that the commensual hierarchy is based on the theory that each caste has certain quality of ritual purity which is lessened or polluted by the certain commensual contracts with the caste having inferior quality. Hence, a superior caste does not eat from the cooking vessel or the hands of a caste that is regarded as inferior, nor will it, its members sit next to the inferior people in the same unbroken line when eating. Drinking and smoking flow similar rules of exclusion. According to Mayer, the position of a caste on the commensal hierarchy can be assessed on the principle that eating the food cooked or served by another caste denotes equality with or inferiority and that not to eat denotes equality and superiority. To put it another way, the those from whom all will eat are higher than those from whom none will eat. Mayer explains that the Brahmins come first in the undisputed position. Brahmins of Ramkheri village eat kacha food cooked only by the members of their own caste or subcaste. All the other castes accept the food cooked by the Brahmins and drink freely from their earthen pots. Moreover, according to Mayer, next to the Brahmins in the hierarchy are two groups of caste. One group is vegetarian while the other is non-vegetarian. Rajput eat non-vegetarian food but consider barbers and the porters as inferior because they accept kacha food from the inferior carpenter or farmer. The dairymen of Ramkheri accept kacha food only from the Brahmins but from no other caste. Only some most inferior caste, weaver, tanner, sweeper accept food from them. In a similar way, oil pressers of Ramkheri are ranked slightly above the dairymen because at least a few caste above them eat from them. Carpenter, gardener, smith, farmer and tailor caste accept kacha food only from the Brahmins. Carpenter is placed higher because he eats only from the Brahmins and the farmer is placed lower than carpenter because he accepts food from Rajputs and Porters as well. Still lower in the hierarchy are the Bilala, Meena, Nath and Drummer. None of these castes accept kacha food from each other. Weaver, Tanner and the Sweepers are at the lowest order of the hierarchy. The caste of Sweeper is considered to be the lowest of all caste in Ramkheri village because the sweeper alone eats the leftover food from the plates of all other caste. Now from the above description of caste hierarchy it becomes clear that the commercial relation in Ramkheri village indicate and express the ritual status of various caste groups. The other indicators of hierarchy as emphasized in the scared scriptures have been rendered inconsequently. Now let us conclude the lesson unit. We have come to realize that the caste situation at the grass root presents several dimensions that are not contained in the secret scriptures. The view from the field lays emphasis on the secular day-to-day -day interaction between the people belonging to different castes and among people belonging to the same caste. Now while the text classify people into four Varnas, Brahman, 
kshatriya vaishya and shudra based on a theory of their origin from different parts of the creator later the fifth varna comprising those that presently known as untouchable or harijans was added the ground reality there are several jatis or caste based on occupation the book view of caste was a rigid and closed system with negligible scope for social mobility the thrust was on rituals and hierarchy based on purity and impurity surely then the caste emerged as a static identity it may be safely concluded that the book view of the caste gives us only a partial view of the reality of the structure and functioning of the caste system in india it gives a normative and a prescriptive order that does not work in all situations it can also be ascertained from the above that the normative principle enshrined in the secret text in the base on the basis of which most of the notions of the book view of the caste are carved four individuals and groups are governed by different principles in a given geographical and socio political situation the field situation is plagued with social change and conflict it also points to the possibility of an alternate way of explaining caste the field view brings to light the dynamics of caste relations in which the element of ritual does not remain excessively significant wealth and power rather than the ritual resume greater importance and determine social hierarchy the dominant caste de- defined by shrinivas as one which preponderates numer- numerically over the other caste and wields preponderant economic and political power governs inter caste relations education and constitutional provision of backward ca- caste have had a profound impact on the operative aspect of the caste system there is fuzziness in hierarchy in the caste occupying the middle ranks here we want to close this lecture thanks for listening and we have come to the end of the unit